Please let me know when you begin the recording and your name also. Ma'am, you are only recording. Has it begun? Has the recording begun? Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah, now it has started. Yeah. So, good morning, class. Now, last time when we met, met, we did the first farmers and herders, isn't it? We were doing, we, did, we talked about the Neolithic age and the word neo and neos and lithos. You remember? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then we talked about the main features of the Neolithic age, and that was the time when the man learned to, uh, to practice agriculture, where he first grew, grew wheat and barley. Okay. He also recognized various fruits and vegetables. So it was an important discovery and it marked the beginning of the agriculture. Now, then we talked of the domestication of animals. Okay. Now, in domestication of animals, we talked of the animals which were, uh, what do you say, which were, uh, which were reared by them, which were looked after by them, and it was. The animals such as cow, buffalo, sheep, goat, all these animals were domesticated. And uh, the early man learned the use of these animals. They knew now that the animals could be used as uh, for various purposes, for milk, for meat, for uh, flesh, etc. Then the early man also realized the importance of domestication of animals and could be used as beasts of burden. Then we talked of the beginning of settled lives where the man settled and started growing crops. He started living in small groups, divided his work accordingly <clears throat> and depended upon each other. Now the early houses which he made were huts made of mud. Then there were some Pitched houses also. And what are pit dwellings? The underground burrow kind of a house is called a pit. <coughs> Sorry. Now, during this time, gradually we learned not only to live underground, but also above the ground level. He built houses made of mud, bricks, oh, sorry, mud, twigs, etc. Okay. Now we come on to village organization. Children, can you see me also? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Hi. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All my love to each one of you. So village organization. Now, when we talk of village organization, we know that as more and more families started living together, there was settlement which gradually increased in size, okay, which developed into villages. Now, once the villages were set up, that means a small, small family clubbed in together, started living, started elaborating, they grew bigger in number, and then they formed the first settlement, a combined group activity in the form of a village, okay? Now, they were in a village, gaon, okay? So the first settlements which were made were the villages. Now the villages were generally found near the rivers and lakes where the soil was fertile and water was available in plenty. Now obviously, if there is a source of water, that means it is helping them to flourish. It was needed for agriculture. It was needed for washing, cleaning, and drinking. So all the settlements were either near the rivers or near the lakes, okay? When man started living in a village community, he could not do as he pleased. There had to be some law and order in the village. In the beginning, whenever there, were, there was some dispute in the village, it was settled by the elderly people of the village community. Now, the elders also made laws which all the people had to obey. Later on, they chose a wise man as their leader. 
Now, the leader settled disputes and also protected the village from attacks from outside. Thus, a settled life brought about greater co co uh, cooperation among the people. So now, basically, people earlier relied upon the elderly people. They listened to what they said, and the rest of them followed. So all the important decisions were made by the elderly. Now, gradually, if there was any dispute among them, somebody fought against somebody. That too was settled by these elder, elder people, the elderly men of the village. Now, gradually, these elderly men were later on chosen as wise men, that means those who were learned enough, that means not the education which we are doing today, no. Those who were practically aware of the surrounding, those who were wise enough to be called as elderly and wise men, those were taken into account and were asked to lead the village or become the heads of the village. They had certain norms, certain rules which they followed, and nobody could go against the norms of the village community. Is this much clear to each one of you? Now we talk of invention of wheel. Now, invention of wheel was a very important discovery. Why? Because another very important discovery of this period was the invention of wheel, which made life much easier in a number of ways. Now, man could make a cart which was drawn by tamed animals and more people could travel easily from one place to another. Now, wheels also help to move heavy loads from one place to another. Then besides that, the use of wheel improved the art of pottery. This man could now travel faster and also transport his surplus produce to other villages. So now what happened was the invention of wheel. It was by chance. See, there's somebody who is disobedient to have opened the mic. If you don't want the class, I will switch over to some other. Ma'am, we can't even switch your mic. Avika, please switch off your mic. Okay. So now the invention of wheel. It was basically by chance. He must have gone to a cliff where he was cutting down a tree. A tree trunk must have rolled down from the cliff or from a mountain egg, edge and rolled and reached the bottom. Now they must have realized, ki, oh, carrying a big, huge tree on their back was difficult. To carry a wood was difficult. But to carry this thing rolling around would be easy. So that was the first time fact. Then they realized that, okay, this circular thing could be used to move the things easily, to slide over things. So the wheels were put into various uses. There were carts made by the wood, uh, wood and which had wheels in them. Now these carts were used for beasts of burdens. The beasts of burdens were attached to them and they carried heavy loads along with them. Okay, apart from this, it could be used from one place to another. Now, carrying the loads, which was heavy, which was earlier carried by early man on his shoulders. Now, it could be carried to long distances with the help of these moving wheels. Apart from this, have you ever seen a potter's wheel? Have you seen a potter's wheel? Oh, just for matke, matke, uh, Pots you make. Yes, yeah. 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 Have you seen that? Yes, ma'am. Have you seen yes, that? called the bunk. In that, wo, the no, I see. Time, yes, oh, no. the answer that was that the person. Remember? Yes, ma'am. 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 Yes, so now yeah, that is called what is the Okay. So if somebody is continuously disturbing me and this is not going to happen. This is sheer wastage of the class. 
extensive use of fire now the use of fire was something which was i again told you by chance at this time the use of fire was further extended let's see what fire was discovered in earlier times you remember in the paleolithic time in the mesolithic yes, time and now it's in the neolithic time we are talking of so discovery of fire was bhumika search of your mind so basically now the use of fire was further used let's see for what it served the purpose of cooking food of different varieties okay now variety of food could be cooked avika nigam man had by now learned to make earthen pots okay now these earlier earthen pots were heated to a certain degree and hardened so as to hold food etc for a longer time we also learned to uh, so he also learned to make a small fire in an earthen dish the first lamp to bring a bit of light and warmth into his dark and cold home so apart from other things fire could be used in a earthen pot a small little pot and it could be used as a lamp apart from this the pots which are made of mud were heated on the fire to give them strength okay earlier the pots which were made were dried up in the sun and they were not so durable but now after heating them over the heat of the fire they turned more stronger so the earthen pots or the jisse kehte hain mitti ka ghada or any utensil made of mud it was heated over the fire to give them the proper strength to the utensil okay then we talk of pottery and other arts and crafts now before the invention of the handmade pottery was used later on man used potter's wheel to make pots he chose different kinds of clay for making vessels he painted on these clay vessels figures of leaves and flowers so now see extra work was also done the pots were made with the help of earlier they used their hands but now they were doing it through the potter's wheel they were using the potter's wheel and on that they were making the pots and at the very same time they were also decorate decorating those pots okay now decoration was done by drawing the pictures of leaves and flowers etc okay then the common colors which were used were red underlined it yellow brown or purple gray okay now man now learned to weave coarse cotton and woolen fabrics please underline this the cotton and woolen fabrics that is they knew how to make cloth okay woolen cloth and cotton now not this designer dresses that we wear today or not this uh, salwar suits or this anything which is very you know trendy nowadays no they just made a big huge piece of cloth straight and then it was used for avika if you join with your mic open i will not let you in okay so it had uh, it gradually they started making those fabric okay now he shaped fine needles and combs from the bones of animals and ivory he could also weave cane baskets so now was the time when they were also looking forward for needles to sew the uh, cloth and the needles were made of either bones or ivory now what is ivory now it is the white teeth of the elephant okay the outer tusk of the elephant now the outer tusk is called the outer teeth of the elephant is called tusk now till the tusk is attached to the elephant's trunk it is called tusk the moment you remove it from there it is called ivory especially if the jewelry or anything else is made out of it we say it is made of ivory is this much clear to each one of you yes ma'am and they also uh, learned to weave baskets okay so baskets were woven aapne dekha hoga aapke ghar mein daliya hogi purani daliyan hoti hai jo 
cane baskets hoti hain have you seen them yes ma'am yes ma'am yeah yeah so nice when i ask for a response then you can open your mic yes, but when i don't want a response please keep them shut okay okay so coming to the next point he made arrows and bows to kill animals besides the crafts of carpentry spinning and weaving dyeing stone cutting and polishing drawing and painting were also known to him so there were various other art forms also with, with which the early man was familiar he now knew how to weave cloth he knew how to dye it that means to color it in different colors he knew how to cut and polish things drawing and painting on the walls on the caves was very prominent you can see the side picture there you will see can you see the wheel the evolution and use can you see all that okay now why were villages generally found near the rivers and lakes answer is the villages were found near villages or lakes uh, sorry rivers and lakes because they needed water and the soil was fertile so it helped them in growing crops okay for agriculture next what are the uses of wheel at present can you name any wheel Uh, the use of any wheel at present the latest yes, car wheels yes they the vehicles are wheels of cycles to run vehicles as simple as that run to trains. run vehicles ah uh, to run trains very good anything else come on bullet car bullet car Have you seen hula hoop? Hula hoop, have you seen? For gymnastics. Yes, ma'am. Ah, yes, ma so there are many things Lambert. you can see. Lambert. Yeah. What? Lambert. Ma'am, in the cart basket. Yes, many things. Next, write the names of the means of transport which depend upon wheels. Nearly all, from bullock cart till the latest the jet planes also all need wheels isn't it so all the means of transport okay i left out on this page a fact file please let us come to that the neolithic revolution was a term first suggested by austrian archaeologist gordon child child as an explanation for the switch made by ancient people from nomadic hunter gatherer behavior to a settled agrarian way of life is underlined the name name gordon child he was the first one to have realized that how man changed and came into the neolithic age where he started a settled life okay research why is your mic on don't be disobedient with me okay avaral please switch off your mic Then my mic is switched off. Okay, so we stop the class uh, right now till here only, and then we'll continue further. Is this much clear to each one of you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Take care. Take care and start moving off. Bye, class. Bye, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Our eyes are on. We have another. We have another class in the later part. Okay. Yes, ma'am. At eleven forty. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Bye, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Bye. Bye. Take care. Take care. Bye, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Bye, ma'am. Thank you. Can somebody throw me out of the call? Can somebody stop my recording? Thank <laughs> you.